Welcome to Montreal, Canada, baby. Mother Nature, she's blowing hard all over again. Doesn't know what she wants. Today is going to be a nice, beautiful, spicy osimbuco because we can. Thank you to Barry Meats. I hope everybody's doing well. I missed you guys yesterday. It was a family day for me, so I wanted to say thank you for all not tuning in. Today, we are going to start with a little, um, a little memory to my friend Rick Torito, who passed away this morning at 2 o'clock. So uh, I'm going to dedicate this dish to him. He was a high school friend. We went to high school together, and um, we're, we are going to miss him dearly. So to you, Rick, oh, cracking open the Prosecco. Let's try to keep it uh, all intact today. And to all my friends that are mourning his loss, it's a sad one for us. So, let's uh, drink to your honor, buddy. To my cameraman compatriot, as usual. To all of you back home. To Rick, rest in peace. Thank you, Marco. Beautiful. Okay. Get the heat on on this guy. I'm gonna put some olive oil in here just so we can start getting hot. So we can start getting ready for a beautiful veal that's gonna go in here. A little butter that's gonna melt down too. Get this pan ready to go. Beautifully cut, beautifully cut. How we're gonna season this is very simple. Big grains of salt, pepper, on both sides, it's a little kicker on this one. I like it, guys, my sweet paprika. Smoked paprika, I love it. And I do this before, because once you put it in the flour, it holds that seasoning nice. I can hear that butter melting. So we're gonna make sure that it doesn't come to a burn. Beautiful, reduce the heat just a little bit. Now, roll it in there, roll it in there, all the way around. We're gonna dust it, dust it nice, all around, one down. Top, bottom, roll it around, dust it off. Top, down, roll it around, dust it off. Let's bring these bad boys. We got butter and olive oil in here. What we're gonna do is I like to just get the sides done, just to glaze them, get that searing going all the way around. You can get the top and bottom, but I like to just hold all that flavor all together. And you don't want much, you just wanna make sure that all that flavor gets locked in, sealed in nice. And we're gonna flip it on its sides, on its top and bottom. We're gonna do a nice sear, top and bottom. A little tough one here today, sorry about that. And we're gonna roll it over. And I'm putting everything in this pot because we're gonna cook everything in here today. So what we're doing is we're searing all the flavors just getting it to a little bit brown, and we're gonna remove it. Making sure all the flavors are sealed properly. Get them all nice. This is gonna take a nice two hours, three hours to cook. Okay, don't need the flour no more. He's done. Onions, we're already pre-chopped onions. Get a nice handful. Glaze the bottom, don't need much more than that. Some carrots, nicely chopped. I don't like to chop them too thin because they're gonna, you know, that's what you wanna look for. Nice consistency on that one there, that's the thickness. It's gonna boil in there for about two, three hours, so it's all gonna reduce. Celery, same thing, about a handful, handful and a half. And you gotta measure your pot mainly, you gotta figure it out how it's gonna come, right? We're gonna add our rosemary and thyme. 
It's about a tablespoon. I'm gonna put all that in together. And the garlic. You don't wanna chop it, I like it. You can chop it if you want. I just like to break it in half a little bit and leave them open just enough so the aroma is gonna infuse in there nice. And you leave it in there. So we're gonna steer this up. And we're gonna wait for a little color. Once the color gets on the onions, you can cover it just to help give it a little bit of, you know, push. We're gonna prepare a little kicker because this is gonna be a double kicker night on this one here. Jalapeno, chop it thin. He's gonna go nice all well in that tomato sauce. So for the tomato, I got a diced and I got a hole. So I'm gonna use a half a can of diced. And I'm gonna use about half of this or a quarter of this and I'm gonna see about how everything is gonna measure up, right? So before we're gonna add our tomato, we're gonna deglaze our, the bottom of our pan, white wine. Wanna have that white wine here, you could, it's roughly equivalent to about half a cup. You can just see. So what's that coming together is, these are gonna to come to a boil. The alcohol is gonna evaporate. Wanna cover it a little bit. And then we're gonna add our tomato sauce in there. And we're gonna add two cups of beef broth. That's all gonna to come together nice. And we're gonna let it boil, and then we're gonna re-add our osimbuku in there, right? So, now that our wine is coming to a boil, we're gonna add our beef stock. And you can keep another extra cup on the side ready, and then you're gonna add as you go along. So here we can actually add our osimbuku back in before we put our tomato sauce. Let them in there nice. Done with him. Half a can diced tomato. Pour it in there nice. Covering all the meat. And then again, we're gonna add about half a can. Gent well, gently pouring it in there. Maybe two tomatoes or three. Now in about an hour, I'm gonna come in, in here and just keep an eye on our tomatoes. What's happening here is that all this is covered. She's gonna to come to a boil. Once it comes to a good boil, then you're gonna simmer it down. That's as simple as it's gonna get. It doesn't get any more easier than this. But every half an hour, keep an eye on the lid, turn your meat every half an hour. Grab your osubuco, flip it over. So what's gonna happen is that this is gonna reduce, everything that's in there is gonna start coming down as it starts boiling. By two and a half hours, she's gonna be ready to go. We're gonna do a nice plate of mashed potatoes and we're gonna serve it nice. You'll see the end result on the picture. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Rest in peace, Rick. Take care.